So, hello everyone. Today my lecture is on some. Uh, I will discuss some numerical problems uh, regarding uh, uh, one-dimensional motion or one, uh, kinematics, and uh, basically those kind of problems which uh, we often encounter in JEE, WBJE, or in other competitive exams. So uh, let us discuss some uh, typical problems uh, of the chapter one-dimensional motion. So now, for for the first things first. First, there are a few things that in case of a one-dimensional motion, what we know is that a part, the rectilinear motion is one-dimensional motion or rectilinear motion or a motion in a straight line. That means the particle is moving in a straight line, in a, exactly in a straight path. And as a result, uh, the, the for that reason, due to its motion, there are some few things which we will often encounter, that is a linear velocity which uh, and if there is an acceleration of the body that is there is a change of velocity if there is a change of velocity occurs then there will be two kind of linear velocities one is the initial velocity and one is the final velocity apart from that if there is a change of velocity is such that the initial velocity is greater than the final velocity then it is retardation or negative acceleration while if the initial velocity if the final velocity is greater than the initial velocity then the body is accelerating body the body is having an acceleration now <clears throat> for every such motion there is a there is a requirement of stipulated amount of time which we denote it by t and obviously when there is a motion of the body in a straight line then there must be a displacement or there must be a distance covered by the body now, uh, there are a few formulas regarding that, uh, that I will discuss first. So, let me share a screen. So, this is the screen and I hope I, uh, it is visible to everyone. Okay. So, now let us see. That there are few equations of motion, or they can they are considered as the kinematical equations of motion. Equations of motion or kinematical equations of motion. So, what are they? First is which comes from the definition of acceleration v equals to u plus a t where v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity a is the acceleration t is the time it is the final velocity this one is the initial velocity this is acceleration and t is the time. So now, this is the formula, the v equals to u plus a t. There are few more formulas are also there. So let me clear this first. Now next is very popular formula s equals to ut plus half a t square and v square equals to u square plus 2 a s. Now these are the three formulas which uh, we will require while solving the problems. Now, so let's start with the uh, problem. First, let me share on the screen. Suppose this is a problem. Uh, 
100 meter sprinter increases her speed from rest uniformly at the rate of one meter per second square. Uh, this will be one meter per second square up to three quarters of the total run and covers the last quarter with uniform speed. How much time does she take to cover first half of the second half of the run? So, so what we are observing in this case that uh, he runs a total uh, of uh, uh, if, uh, the total distance uh, traveled by the sprinter is 100 meter. Now, th there is a requirement in order we have to find out that how much time does she require in order to does she take to cover first half of the second half of the run. So, first half of the second half that implies that. So, let we what we will do. We will consider the thing that, just a second. Now, that means, uh, first of all, the total distance is 100 meters. So, if I split the 100 meter into four equal parts, then the first one is 25 meter, then all will be 25 meter, 25 meter. Now, the first half is obviously, this one is 50 meter. It's eventually the, this part is 50 meter and now this one is and the second half is also 50 meter. Now, so this is 100 meter first. Now, so this one is the second half. Now, for from the first half of the second half is 25 meter. So, when I'm talking about the first half of the second half, when I'm talking about this part, the first half of the second half, that means actually the particle has traveled 75 meter. So, I can say that the distance covered S1 equals to 
50 meter in time t1 the distance covered s2 equals to 75 meter in time t2 and the distance covered s3 equals to 100 meter in time t3 obviously these are in seconds t1 t2 and t3 are definitely in seconds now the acceleration of the body is i know that it's given one meter per second square so if this is the acceleration of the body then it's quite uh, natural that uh, if i use the form there is a formula that s1 equals to u t plus half a t1 square now initially i am considering the initial velocity to be zero if u is zero considering u equals to zero the body started from rest so s1 equals to half a t1 square or from here we get that 50 meter equals to half a t1 square or uh, a is 1 so eventually t1 square equals to 100 Meter. So definitely from here we can calculate T1. So T1 will be simply 10 seconds. Now next when we go to the next part that is V2 square equal to U square plus 2AS2 then obviously this part is 0. So, V2 square equals to 2, this is 1, acceleration is 1, into S2, and S2 is, if I go to this part, S2 is 75 meter. So, this is equals to 75. So, V2 equals to square root of 150, this will give 12.25 meter per second. So this is I, this is the thing which is read from I got V2. Now since I got V2, then using this formula, V2 equals to U plus A T2. Now U is 0. So V2 equals to A is 1. So V2 equals to T2 or it implies that T2 equals to 12.25 meter per second. Sorry, it will be meter per second, which is 1. Now, what about T3? Now, T3 is the time required to complete 100 meter. Now, if I subtract, if I subtract T3 minus T2, then I will get this particular half, the time required to cover this particular situation. Which is my actual motto. So, before doing that, uh, if I do that, now T3 minus T2 is what? T3 minus T2 is, it will, the time is actually speed, uh, distance by speed. So, if I take the distance 25 divided by speed, so it will be 12.25. And its value will uh, be something, like if I go through some, divisions if it will be 14.9 14.29 seconds now i know t2 is 12.25 so t3 can be calculated t3 equals to 14.29 plus 12.25. So this is the total time taken by the There is my mistake. I'm sorry. The
okay the division is a bit wrong it will be approximately 2.04 seconds 2.04 seconds so this P3 will be 2.04 plus 12.25 it will give seconds this will give 14.29 seconds if I got T3 then T3 minus T1 will give my will give me the actual answer. Now, I found out that T1, T1 is 10 seconds. So, T3 minus T1 will be 14.29 minus 10. So, it will be 4.29 seconds. So this is the answer that is the time required to cover the time required to cover first half of the second half of the run. So this is how a numerical problem is solved. Now, if I go to a different problem, so a very popular problem, the crossing of trains. Let me discuss with you the crossing of train problem. So remove this. There are two trains A and B, 100 km apart, are traveling towards each other with a starting speed of 50 km per hour for both. The train A is accelerating at a speed of 18 km per hour square and B is deaccelerating at 18 km per hour square. Find the distance from initial position of A of the point when the engines cross each other, just when the engines are crossing each other. Okay, so at this moment See, these kind of problems are solved keeping or these kind of problems are ta tackled keeping in mind that whenever the, there is an occurrence of an event and that event is common to both that is the two trains are meeting whenever there is an occurrence of such type of event then always there you should keep in mind the thing that at that point that uh, the, the occurrence of event is uh, uh, in that particular case, uh, for that particular occurrence of event, for both the for both the trains, the time should be constant, or the time is same for both the bodies. And otherwise, obviously, both the trains cannot meet. Whenever whenever a the train A and train B is meeting, that means the that particular time is same for both the trains A and B. So let uh, if I consider that particular time, if I consider that particular time, let the time of meeting be T. If this is the time of meeting, then one more thing in this case that 
suppose this is point A from where the train A started and this is point B from where the point uh, the train B started and if both are 100 kilometer apart 100 kilometer apart then let at point p both the trains met now now in this case since both the trains met at the point p if i consider then obviously the total time taken by both the trains to travel or the total distance taken by both the times uh, covered total distance covered sorry for both the trains must be equal to 100 that is S A for the train A plus S B for train B must be equal to 100. Now S A can be written as using S equals to U T plus half A T square. U T plus half A T square. Time will be same for both. Plus of U T minus half A T square equals to 100. Now, so since the train B is deaccelerating, that's why I've used this minus sign. So obviously, this part cancels out to so 2 ut equals to 100. Now, In this problem, it is given that both the trains started with the initial velocity of 50 km per hour. If this is true, then 2 into 50 into t equals to 100, which gives t equals to 1. That is, after one hour, the event actually occurred. Now, they have asked at what distance both the train met. Find the distance from the initial position of A when the engine starts. That means I want I have to find out this distance, which is x. I have to find out AP. So if the now I got the time that both the trains met after one hour. Now S equals to AP, which is equals to uh, if I say that a U T plus half A T square, then it will be 50 into 1 plus half into there is a acceleration given 18 kilometer per hour square so 18 into t square is 1 square this will be 9 so 50 plus 9 but 15 uh, both the trains made when they were 59 meter uh, uh, when the train a was 59 meter from its starting position. So, this is another problem. So, now I will go to an another uh, different type kind of problem. Let me rub this one. Now, let us discuss a different problem. There is a question a balloon is rising up with a velocity of 9.8 meter per second. This is printing mistake. This is just to call minus one. So a balloon rising up with a velocity of 9.8 meter per second square. Sorry, a balloon is rising up with a velocity of 9.8 meter per second, and a bag is dropped from it when its height from the ground was 39.2 meter. To calculate the time taken by the bag to reach the ground, so see the balloon is rising up, and at that at a certain moment you just drop the bag. The balloon is rising. The ball is the bag is falling down. So, in this case,
Now in this case, so velocity is 9.8 meter per second. Now one sign convention is to be mentioned that whenever a, something rises up vertically upward, moving along, vertically upward in a straight line, so vertical motion in straight line. So this since the upward direction is positive y-axis, positive y-axis, and the downward one, the downward position, is negative y. So whenever a body falls down, we take the displacement is, the velocity is taken to be negative. Now the displacement, uh, you can, since the body is falling down, so the displacement can be taken, uh, that is 39.2, which is positive. But the, velo since, but the velocity must be taken as minus 9.8 because it's falling downward and g equals to simply 9.8 meter per second square which is a constant now so if i put this uh, that in using the particular formula s equals to ut plus half a t square so it will be 39.2 equals to say the body started with uh, from rest so this part is zero ut part so it will be just half into a which will be uh, nothing but g that is 9.8 into t square so 13.9 equals to if i cut it will be 4.9 t square in this case t square will be 39.2 by 4.9 which can be approximately this one will be t square t square so if i divide it it will be approximately Four seconds. You can consider it. Yeah, it will be approximately four seconds. But here I have made a mistake that the initial velocity can't be zero in this case. So what I have to do, so, uh, so I, uh, we should be very careful while doing these problems. I have missed the velocity one. Let me do the problem once. That S equals to UT plus half AT square. Now, S is 39.2, U is minus 9.8 into T plus half into 9.8 T square. So 39.2 equals to, this will be 4.9 I need to find out the time solving this equation. It's a quadratic equation of time. You will get t approximately equals to 4 seconds. This is the answer. So the basic thing about this problem was that the, when uh, what I have to consider is that whenever the body is falling, the, I have to take the velocity to be negative and other things to be positive. So this is one of the problem.
Now I switch on to a next type of problem. I'm discussing different types of problems. So I'm switching on to a next type of problem. Okay. This one. Now, these are figure below shows uh, X plot of one dimensional motion of a particle. Is it correct? So let me show you the figure. So in this problem, there's a question that uh, figure below shows uh, x plot, uh, x plot means uh, it's xt plot, rather it's xt plot of one dimensional motion of a particle. Now, what can I, I say from this? So this one is a figure and obviously uh, that, uh, the, so the graph of that particle moves in a straight line for t less than zero and uh, on the parabolic path t greater than zero. So uh, can I say that uh, this particular thing, that is it correct to say from the graph that the particle moves in a straight line for t less than zero and on a parabolic path for t greater than zero? That whenever the particle for t less than zero, it is moving in straight line and then it's moving uh, in a parabolic path for t greater than zero. So what type of if thing it is actually suggesting, what the graph is actually telling. So first of all, we cannot say because t less than zero means what we don't know. There is no uh, ex explanation. Actually, physically, it is not possible that time is negative. And the th second thing is that, uh, so this, uh, but it is the xt graph and it is the xt plot. There's a position time graph and this is not a trajectory uh, actually. So what we see that at t equals to zero, we get x equals to zero, okay. So, and eventually the uh, displacement is the square function of time. So from where we can see, say that if t equal to zero, x equal to zero, and then the uh, body is having a curve, that means the body is gaining some acceleration. So uh, from this particular uh, graph, what we can say that the body is falling freely. So this is a graph of free fall of a body. The body is falling freely. So due to that uh, acceleration, due to gravity, this the uh, displacement is uh, becoming a par parabolic function of time. Since we have s equal to ut plus half a t square, so s is a function of time square. That's why we are getting this parabolic type of graph. So this is one, uh, this graphical problems are one of the very common problems of JEE or other comparative exams, obviously. Now we come to the next problem.
So this is another graph problem. The velocity time graph of a particle in one dimension motion is shown below. I have just shifted it to the right uh, for the conveniency. So just ignore that. But which of the following formula are correct for describing the motion of the particle over time interval from T1 to T2? So in this case, one should notice In this case, we see that the V versus T graph is not straight in this case. Uh, so, in such situations, if the V versus T graph is not straight, then obviously the this, uh, but from between uh, T1 and T2, this reason, we are not getting a constant slope, that means. So what we can infer from this, that between these two regions, B, in this region, this particular region, if I don't get a constant slope, that means V by T is not constant, which actually implies that the body is moving with a non-uniform acceleration. The body is moving with a non-uniform acceleration. Because in a velocity time graph, obviously the slope of the graph represents the acceleration of the body. So since in this case, the in between T1 and T2, the line is not straight. So this particular situation implies a body moving with a non-uniform acceleration. So these are some typical type of problems. Uh, these are what we say as graphical problems. And there are some uh, more, few more problems there. Uh, I will come to the, uh, come with you all in the next class to describe how to discuss some more problems. We, about uh, one dimension motion or kinematics now uh, so but these are also some typical type of problems which eventually uh, people encounter in the, uh, some competitive exams so thank you everyone